Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more KSP2. Uh, with a little bit of KSP1 thrown in for good measure. And uh, I know what you're thinking, Smith, are we looking at more aircraft today? Or you might not be thinking that because you've probably seen the title of the video. But regardless, no. No, we're not. Well, maybe a little bit actually, but we won't be looking at things like this, my cyclone, because the last two patches, which were meant to fix a whole bunch of things, broke this thing. Um, yeah, the the inner rear control surfaces, those elevators, they, they do the opposite direction for pitch, but they do the right way for roll. I mean, I could take them off of uh, off of roll and then just invert them. Um, but yeah, it used to work. It's no longer working. I'm just going to chalk that up to a bug that will be fixed later and sort of move on. They did fix the afterburner animations in the, in the latest patch, which is nice, because the first patch kind of buggered those up and made this look really wonky. But uh, anyway, yes, um, in our last KSP2 video, I was trying to look for major changes to the aerodynamic system, um, primarily using uh, aircraft and got a little bit of a spacecraft involved at the end. Today, we're going to be doing much of the same thing, but also sort of the opposite, um, if that makes any sense at all. Oh, for God's sake, well done, Smith. We're going to be mainly using spacecraft, and at the end we're going to get sort of an aircraft. It's a it's a space plane. We're going to get a space. Let's just let's just get on with it. We start then with what is basically an exact replica of the experiment I did at the end of the last aerodynamics video. It's uh, <laughs> it's original content, folks. Stick around. Uh, no, the last one was inexact to say the least, and I thought I could probably do better. So I ran this. I got capsules of exactly the same weight. I used separatrons, which I checked have exactly the same thrust, exactly the same ISP. I um, got them to as close to the same orbital as I could. KSP2 is still a little bit buggy uh, in that regard. Um, and then I fired the separatrons, and yeah, a lot of the parts have different levels of fuel in them. So despite having um, despite having the same thrust and the same ISC, uh, ISP, the uh, the KSP two capsule was still traveling 17 meters per second faster after the uh, after the deorbit burn. Obviously, then the KSP one capsule is going to re-enter more aggressively. The timings are going to be off, but. Uh, all is not lost because the initial conditions weren't too far apart from each other. And once you get lower into the atmosphere, you know, the, the main factor influencing how your craft behaves is the atmosphere. So um, what I did is I did a comparison of the two capsules once they got below 30,000 meters. And it pretty much lined up exactly. Well, until I popped the parachutes, of course, which I tried to time and get exactly the same, which really didn't work. And then, of course, they splashed down and the KSP-2 capsule sinks, taking your crew to the bottom of the ocean, unless you're quick with it. Um, but none of that really matters because we have the first result I'm happy with. And it seems to suggest that uh, while parts have changed between the two versions, the basic aerodynamic model has changed very little, if at all. So I think we've pretty thoroughly covered atmospheric descent over the two videos. For the next experiment, I want to look at ascent. Um, not like sandalwood or jasmine, I mean like going up as opposed to going down. So I thought a simple sounding rocket would do it. You know, um, design something using parts which were available in both versions, stick them on the launch pad, uh, throttle to maximum straight up and see what happens. I mean, there's, a, there's nothing that could prevent us from getting a comparable result here, is there? <laughs> oh God. Not much to report from the initial KSP-1 version, it uh, it just flew up, nothing went wrong, and uh, managed an apoapsis of uh, 696 kilometers. Switching over to KSP-2, I built the identical rocket, uh, took it to the launch pad. Well, I say I took it to the launch pad. Uh, first of all, I got distracted by looking at the launch options, and I saw there was one called Boat Launch. So I thought, ooh, can you launch it from like a launch barge or something? So I clicked on it, and no, it, it, it's, it's for launching boats. Or spacecraft that are just like magically floating there in the air with no real visible means of support. But anyway, moving on. The KSP-2 rocket did much the same as our KSP-1 rocket. It just launched up, nothing eventful, nothing really went wrong. Um, the only major difference was when I got to check the apoapsis, it has only managed to get up to uh, 485 kilometers. This was a much bigger difference than I was expecting, particularly considering, you know, all the other experiments we've already done. Um, so I, I set about trying to work out if there were any significant differences between the two rockets that would explain this, which of course I should have done before I even started the experiment, but uh, uh, never mind. The first thing I found was that the KSP-2 version of the rocket engine I was using had a slightly higher thrust than the KSP-1 version. So I uh, I corrected for that, launched another rocket, and it did even worse. Uh, 483 kilometers this time. The second thing I found was that the KSP-2 rocket actually had a lower delta V on it, um, which kind of ties in with what I found earlier with the um, 
the KSP2 parts having a, a lower delta V to uh, to fuel mass ratio. Um, so to fix this, I kind of had to go back into KSP1, create a rocket with a lower delta V, which sort of reduces the mass, but it has a lower thrust. So hopefully those two things will cancel each other out. Relaunch that and see what happens. We got an apoapsis of uh, 459 kilometers, which means that the two most comparable versions of our rocket aren't too far away, but I think the only solid conclusion we can draw is um, is about changes to parts rather than any uh, anything about atmosphere or aerodynamics. But uh, yeah, this has been like watching paint dry. So let's uh, let's go and try something a little bit more adventurous. I don't think you can get a better intersection of uh, spacecraft and aerodynamics and the uh, the old space plane. So I've made a recreation of my Kestrel SSTO, a craft I used in my series, uh, The Journey Continues. And fortunately, every part that I made this out of in uh, KSP-1 is available in KSP-2, apart from some radiators, but heat hasn't been added to the game. And um, yeah, this was an interesting one. First of all, I built the wing in sections and like one of the sections decided it was going to like go upside down so the curved bit is on the bottom and the flat bit is on the top. I think that's what happened to my cyclone. I think I sort of have to flip it over and then take it to the other side of the plane. That might be why the elevators weren't correctly, uh, working correctly earlier, but I decided I was just going to roll with it for the Kestrel and then, you know, hopefully this will be a bug that's fixed later and it, it looks all right later on. Another big change is to do with the nuclear engines. The original version uh, would get into orbit with a, a hell of a lot of liquid fuel to spare and, you know, you could just pump that through the nuclear engines and that could use that. But in KSP-2, no, you have to specifically use uh, liquid hydrogen for the engines and that requires some pretty big tanks that don't contain a lot of liquid hydrogen. So I've tried my best to balance it out here. Uh, it still has too much uh, liquid fuel when you get into orbit, even considering its usefulness, you know, on descent with the, the jet engines. Also, uh, the amount of hydrogen I have managed to squeeze in there isn't a lot. You do not get a lot of delta V out of that. The initial stages of the ascent went well, that is when I didn't pull up too hard and rip the wings off. And yeah, I got a comment um, not that long ago about how someone was having difficulty getting their space plane up to above the speed of sound. but. I didn't have any problems with that whatsoever. This thing handled pretty much like I remember my old uh, Kestrel space plane handling in KSP-1, getting past the speed of sound and then slowly picking up speed. Um, as with KSP-1, sometimes you do sort of have to get up to a height and then sort of dip the nose and lose some altitude to get it past the uh, past Mach 1 to start with, and then things like the, the whiplash engines or the rapier engines will start to pick up thrust. Um, so that's, uh, that's not a change I've noticed. Got this thing up into orbit okay, managed to circularize with the uh, with the nuclear engines okay, uh, managed to deorbit again with those nuclear engines, and the descent was interesting. Um, I think, as we've probably established, one of the big changes between KSP-1 and KSP-2 is how the game handles lifting surfaces, wings and uh, control surfaces and the like, and I was very cautious on the way down. I kept my angle of attack very, very low, and even so, that wasn't enough to... Um, to stop it from spinning out. It picked up a bit of yaw. I think I need uh, to make my uh, my tail fins a bit bigger on this thing. But yeah, it did the the same old spin out. It does it does normally even with uh, a lot of the fuel pumped forward, trying to keep that uh, center of mass as further forward as possible. But again, as with KSP one, it got low enough. I managed to get it back under control. Uh, fired up the rapier engines and took it on a pretty long flight back to the KSC where I I managed to land it successfully. And then I. Clearly hadn't set the wheels up properly because it span out, but um, yeah, all in all a success. Anyway, that will bring an end to this little two-part experiment, and what conclusions can we draw? Well, obviously there have been changes. Uh, fuel tanks operate a bit differently. Some of the engines have different thrusts. Uh, just to repeat it, wing surfaces, control surfaces, the way the game handles uh, lifting surfaces has clearly changed a fair bit, but... As for the bigger sort of aerodynamic slash atmospheric model, very little, if anything. At least not for the time being. Uh, anyway, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have and you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, commenting, letting me know your thoughts. Um, yeah, following me on Twitter, maybe getting involved with the Discord, great KSP and BD Armory community on there and more besides. Uh, all those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon. You too can uh, get things like your own little Patreon Kerbal for use in the KSP1 videos because... You can't do custom curls in KSP2 at the moment. Uh, hoping they change that. Uh, your name at the end of videos, access to the Patreon only Discord, some other stuff. I, God, I will get it out at some point, I promise. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, I will be back soon with some more Kerbal Space Program of one variety or another. But until then, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.